Welcome to a presentation on Sri Lanka, a, a short introduction to Sri Lanka. My name is Jean-Marc Flambert, and I'm the director of your tourism partner, a marketing and sales representation company here in the UK. Ayubowan and Wanakam. Let me start with this traditional greeting. Ayubowan is Sinhalese and Wanakam is in Tamil. And um, in Sinhalese, Ayubowan means may you be blessed with long life or may all beings on earth have long life. So today we're going to go through an overview, um, a round trip, a sample round trip and the things to consider when planning a tailor-made round trip. We're going to look at the west coast of Sri Lanka, that's above Colombo. We're going to look at Colombo itself, uh, the southwest coast from uh, Mount Davinia, just after Colombo, all the way down to Tangol. We're also going to um, start exploring some of the themes, but for this video, I'm just going to touch on wildlife and um, there will be other vi videos to follow. So as an overview, uh, Sri Lanka has approximately 21 million people, um, probably a little bit more since the last census. Our religion is predominantly Buddhist, Buddhism. Uh, but we also have a strong and large Muslim uh, population, uh, Hindu believers and Christian believers. Um, we are a melting pot in Sri Lanka. Uh, the first colo colonizers, apologies, were the Portuguese. Uh, we were also under the Dutch and uh, lastly, the British. And, um, and this is uh, where we have our strongest recent influence but you'd be amazed at how many Dutch forts still are in existence there. Some of the Dutch forts were done up or, or reinforced or extended uh, by the British uh, but you see connections in our language and our culture and our history to the Portuguese, the Dutch and the British. Uh, my mother is, uh, uh, we call her, uh, her, her ethnicity is Burger which means that she was at some point mixed uh, with the Dutch uh, who were ruling over the country at the time. Um, and uh, Sri Lanka has been independent since 1948. And um, we still have a close connection with the UK. We love beating the UK in cricket. We love exporting tea and the best tea um, in the UK is arguably from um, Ceylon or from Sri Lanka. And um, so yes, there's a strong connection between the UK and Sri Lanka. And whilst uh, the UK market from a tourism point of view is about the third largest in terms of actual numbers, the British stay for longer and spend more. So I would argue at least that they are the number one uh, tourism source market for Sri yeah. Lanka. From a natural perspective, uh, let's look at the country and the physical appearance. Uh, it's 25,000 square miles, so that's roughly the size of Ireland. Our tallest mountain is um, more than double the height of, or almost double the height of Ben Nevis. 30% uh, of the country is either a national park, a nat nature reserve, a strict reserve or a sanctuary. Um, we have uh, two UNESCO World Heritage sites from our ecological aspects. So that's Singharaja Rainforest and the Peak Wilderness, plus uh, we have six Ramsar sites, and I'll touch on Ramsar if you don't know what that is a little bit later. Uh, we have 400 waterfalls. The tallest is five times the height of Niagara Falls. Uh, we have over 100 rivers, and the UK only has 22. And our longest one is 200 miles long. We have an endemic bird species of 26 endemics, um, and a, an additional seven that we have proposed to be classified as endemics, bringing the total to 33, uh, 492 species. We have over 20 endemic butterfly. So this is just to give you a snapshot, um, the variety that Sri Lanka has to offer from a natural uh, point of view. This is a, a, a slide shot from a website, Wildlife Tours Sri Lanka. It's a DMC in Sri Lanka, and it's just to show you they have a nice illustrative map highlighting all the different wildlife parks. And this is just to say that there's a lot in the center, in the mountainous region of the center of the island, a lot on the southeast coast around Yala, and some um, on the northwest coast around Wilpapu. From a UNESCO point of view, we have 
eight UNESCO World Heritage Sites and the um, figure in brackets, for example, City of Anuradhapura 1982 means that it was declared and recognized by UNESCO in 1982. So we have Anuradhapura, an ancient city, we have Sigir Rock, um, we have, and, and the entire city around Sigir Rock, we have the city of Polonara, Kandy, uh, the temple in particular, uh, Gol Fort, uh, Singharaja Rainforest, which I mentioned earlier, the Golden Temple of Dambula and the Central Highlands or the Peak Wilderness, which I also mentioned earlier. So you can correspond it with the numbers on the map on the on the left to, to look at it. And at any point during this presentation, if I'm going too fast, just press pause and you can delve into it. Maybe go on to Google, do some research and come back. That's the overview. And now let's delve into a traditional round trip around Sri Lanka touch on the round trip. So traditionally a round trip starts in Colombo and Nigambo on the southwest coast. The airport is 15 minutes from Nigambo and now about 30-35 minutes from Colombo with the highway and you normally spend a day or two recuperating from the flight especially if it was a night flight. You then drive straight up to the bigger circle of what we call the cultural triangle where you have Anuradhapura, Sigiriya, Polonara, Dambula, and you spend anything from two nights, sometimes three nights, uh, exploring some of those bigger sites. Um, and then you go up to Kandy, and Kandy is down on the map, and I'm saying up because Kandy is already elevated above sea level, about 500 meters above sea level. Um, and you visit the Temple of the Tooth, the Kandy Lake, the Royal Botanical Gardens. And then you go further up to around 1,200, 1,500 meters above sea level where we have the town of Norelia, which we also call Little England. Um, and the reason for that is it rains a lot. Um, and that is where you have the tea plantations, you have the old colonial life, an amazing golf course, some beautiful colonial hotels. And then we go all the way down to the East Coast, uh, to Yala, which is a long drive. And, um, and then people spend the last few nights along the beach. And the traditional um, tourism beaches are the ones that are marked in the little stars, the red stars on the map. Um, and you always make sure that the last night is in Colombo Airport, so you have close proximity because the Southwest Road, till the highway came up, the Southwest Roads were very um, slow. So let's look at this uh, with some old postcards from an amazing man, Jürgen Schreiber, um, who took these postcards over 20, 30 years ago. Um, so the first one is Nigambo, a fishing village. The city skyline back then of Colombo, which looks very different today with our Twin Towers. The Pinneville Elephant Orphanage, not very popular anymore, and I'll touch on that later on as to why. Sigir Rock. Frescoes at Sigir Rock, painted using vegetable dye. The last stage when you climb Sigir Rock, uh, what we call the Lion's Falls, because the facade of the rock was um, of a lion and you entered through the mouth of the lion. The caves at Dambula, also known as the Dambula Temple. The inside of those of the temple. The ancient city of Polonara. And moving on to Anuradhapur. And I've included this slide just to give you an idea of distances. Um, a lot of people try to spend two days in the cultural triangle, but the distances are large. So you can get an idea of how long it takes from A to B and how much time you spend in the car. The Temple of the Tooth Relic of the Lord Buddha and Kandy, with the, the roof there, which looks gold colored, is actually gold plated. Candy Town by Night. Dancers, cultural dance performances in Candy are very popular. The Candy Parahara, which is an exposition of the tooth relic of the Lord Buddha, which is inside the casket on that tusker, which is leading in the center. Um, again, um, there's a lot of concerns about this pageant, as serious and religious it is, it's not a touristic pageant. 
uh, there's concerns of the use of animals in this pageant and the tea plantations in the hill country but also on the southwest coast and um, the amazing waterfalls. I would like to challenge you to relook really at this traditional round trip model that um, you and um, two operators, travel agents, have been promoting in Sri Lanka. Number one, uh, the use of animals is in full. So let's skip out uh, Pinneville Elephant Orphanage. It's a zoo at the end of the day, um, and Google it if you want to learn more. Um, again, personally, I would discourage uh, visiting during the uh, candy pear hair because again, um, the concern of animals, people don't mind animals being used by all means, it's amazing, but you need to be aware of it and warn your clients. Um, the cultural triangle, we try to rush through. We often spend two, maximum three days in the cultural triangle. You could spend a week there. And uh, very often because of lack of time, we skip on a but on a is missing. Um, and it's, sorry, we're skipping on a and it's amazing, so don't skip on a Um Norelia to Yala is very long, so we need to find closer national parks, maybe uh, going to Uduwalawe first, or maybe doing Wilpatha while you're visiting on or while you're in the Cultural Triangle. Um, overall, we're just spending too much time in a car, so that needs to be looked at. Um, we're changing and hotels every day, every two days, packing, unpacking. At the end of it, you need a holiday. Um, and um, now with the highways opening up, um, there's new opportunities. So we could be looking at things a little bit differently. I just, at this point, wanted to touch on the road. So right now the airport is Katonaika, which you can probably see on the map. And the airport, we have the Katonaika to Colombo Highway, which has been in operation for some time. And also from Colombo in this, in the map, it's marked Kultava, all the way down to Mathura has been around for a while. The highway has come up all the way to Hambantota in February this year, so 2020, so that part is complete. Um, and um, the ring road, so that means from Colombo, if you're coming from the airport, you no longer need to get into Colombo to connect to the southern highway, um, and so that's done. And some of you may not know, but the highway from the airport, uh, we're linking Colombo to the airport on Pukurnagla, Kandy, and Dambula is in progress and I'm told that's going to be ready in 2021 um, and I haven't heard any reason to know that to think that it won't be ready uh, sometime next year so that's really exciting and that's going to allow you to look at your itineraries a little bit different because you're going to be saving so much time uh, on the traveling. So some of the things that I'd like to propose uh, to you when you're tailor making these itineraries uh, the traditional round trip is slow down um, just stay in two or three centers, don't stay in five different places, and try to stay longer in each one. If the customer at the end of the trip hasn't seen everything there is to see in Sri Lanka, that's the reason they need to come back. Um, wildlife, the wildlife in Sri Lanka is amazing, and I think while we've really pushed our culture and our history in the round trips, I don't think we do. We kind of say, yes, the last one day, the last day is in Yala, um, just throw that in for good measure. But I think there's a lot more interest in nature, the environment. I mean, at the end of the day, especially for our children, um, there's not going to be all these animals around. Um, and so the sooner they can see it, the better. And the more that we show interest in visiting wildlife around the world, the more it will be preserved and protected. Um, we have a lot of different religions in Sri Lanka, and uh, we visit a couple of the ancient cities um, as part of a tour. But I want to really encourage you to have um, active places of worship, churches, ovils, uh, temples, mosques. Visit the places that are open and living to learn about our heritage and our customs. Um, and also visit the smaller places uh, because, yes, it's great to see Sigir, it's great to see Polonar, it's great to do the Gold Court. But what about all the other little, smaller, interesting places which have less visitors, which are more authentic, and also they cost less money? Um, tea plantations are amazing to go into the center of the country to see the tea plantations, but also don't forget you have different elevation of tea and you can visit tea plantations, you know, 20 minutes in from Ventato or, or Gaul. So you don't always have to go all the way to the hills, though the hills are spectacular and the waterfalls are amazing. And now with the highway uh, that's already open now, you could actually spend your last night in Gaul. You don't need to be in Colombo or Nigambo. You can actually be goal or as far away as you want because the roads are so much better. 
So in terms of the things to do when you're in the cultural triangle, a lot of people forget that Wilpato is very close by. It's just on the left of, An of Anuradhapur. And so while you're in the cultural triangle, enjoying the Anuradhapur Kolonar Sigir, why not do a day trip to Wilpato? It's an option. Um, when you're in this area of Sigir Dambula, there's a lot of smaller, less known places to visit. So there's Enderagala Temple, which is uh, between Dambula and Sigir. It's a turn off on the right, just right up on the road. Um, there's hardly an entrance fee. You just give a donation and it has spectacular views of the surrounding, including Sigir Rock. Um, also, Mineria National Park is just beyond uh, Polonara, and that's when in July, August, you have the elephant gatherings, you have big herds that you can see. And near Sigiri also, there's Kaludia Pokuna, which is a, an ancient hermitage and um, fascinating um, flora and fauna and, and, and ancient structure. And with a good guide, you can really bring that to life. Around Kandy too, you must visit the Kandy Temple. It's fantastic. But don't forget to stop and visit either Mbeke Devale um, or one of the others. There are lovely temples and, and covils um, which are full of history, uh, beautiful structures, and hardly any visitors. Um, and, and so, you know, this is just ways of adding little extra things which are off the beaten track for your visit. Um, if you're staying, say, on the beach, and I put this map showing Alutgama town, which is between uh, Beryl and Benthutta. Um, it's only two and a half hours to get to Bopat Alla Al Falls now. I know it's quite a long drive, but what I'm trying to say here is because of the road network has got better and you see part of the journey, the first part of the journey is on the E1 highway, you can actually go um, to places far away to get experiences that you'd never get on the beach. Uh, while staying on the beach. So it suddenly opened up new opportunities. So be aware of this because some customers will say, look, I want to be on the beach, but I'd want to do five or six really interesting day trips. And you need to be ready to be able to offer those. We uh, also have Richmond Castle inland from Kaluthra, a beautiful old castle, some lovely interiors, um, just 27 minutes from Benthamton. So again, a very feasible day trip to see something different. So um, those are some ideas of the round trip, what is existing and little ideas of what you could do differently if you wanted to. Let's uh, touch on the West Coast. And by this, I mean the whole stretch from uh, Colombo and north up to Mana. So Mana, um, I haven't been there personally yet. It's one of those places that are absolutely amazing. And you have what they call Adams Bridge Port and the footbridge where you can see what people believe was a way that you could walk across to India. The water is very shallow. Wilpato National Park is an absolutely amazing park, and I'll talk about that more in a moment. Putlam has St. Anne's Church, which has had many miracles, and the lagoon. Kalpitiya is great for whale watching and dolphin watching, and also um, kite surfing. Pilau is a, is a fishing uh, village, a big Christian center. Waikal has some beautiful beaches, prawn farms. The Gingoi River is a lot of fun to go kayaking on. Um, very slow water, but it's lovely for, for a beginner. Um, Kochikade is again some beaches, some fishing. Nigambo, we all know Nigambo, fantastic beaches and a fishing village. And in Jaila, that's just before Colombo, is the Dutch Canal, which I'll talk, talk about in a moment. So this is um, the next few pictures I've taken from a presentation I had done for Anantaya Resorts and Spa. And um, this is just to show that, say, from Chilau, you could base yourself there and do all these wonderful day excursions. So one of the places of interest from the West Coast, whether you're staying in Nigambo or Chilau or Waikal, is um, the Wetland Sanctuary. It's one of our six Ramsar sites. And Ramsar Convention um, protected and named certain conservation sites. And there are six of them in Sri Lanka. Another amazing experience is whale watching and dolphin watching in uh, Sri Lanka. Um, and this is in Kalpitiya, um, not far again from the beach resorts on the West Coast. So Wilpatha National Park, um, as I've mentioned before and I'll be talking about later on, is, a, is an amazing park uh, close to the beach. So you can do a day excursion or a quick one night stay. Muneswaran Hindu temple um, is, is absolutely amazing. It's uh, very vibrant, very important. 
uh, to the Hindu believers and um, it's full of life. It's, it's a must visit if you're in the area. There is both the Parakrama Rock Temple, which is the one on the right. I mean, you haven't seen uh, pictures um, of, of temples in Sri Lanka looking like this. So it's a very different style. And then on the left, the Thonigala Rock Inscriptions, the second longest rock inscriptions. Um, and, and again, not far, a, a great day excursion from the beach or uh, on the way to Wilpatu, you could be staying here and then um, moving on north. Kalpitya Dutch Fort is one of the many forts and is as exciting in certain ways as the Mathura Fort or the um, Gaul Fort, but of course less developed than Gaul. In the Dutch Canal, I really want to encourage you to take a boat trip along this canal, which used to run from Nigambo all the way down to Colombo. Part of it has been restored and again going down on this canal, you can see what village life is like, you can see what lo how local communities live and it's a different way of experiencing and seeing the country. So now let's get on to Colombo. Um, it's where I lived for from 1984 to 2004. So uh, for quite a long time, I love the city. It's constantly changing. It's constantly vibrant. The Colombo Museum, a lot of people miss and it's amazing. It has a lot of great um, history and it's well presented, well laid out. And the Wolfendall Church, which is on the bottom right, um, which has a beautiful old pipe organ, and um, it's fascinating. But again, a lot of people miss out. There's a lot of private clubs like the Royal Colombo Golf Club, which is an amazing golf course, as you can see on the top right, with a train running through the actual golf club. So the man is putting there with a the train behind him. Um, and also there's the Dutch Burger Union, there's the rowing club, lots of private clubs, and try to get your travel agent or your tour operator your ground handler in, in Sri Lanka to, to allow you to go and have a drink at the bar. They're wonderful places or have a meal. And uh, there's one of the signature places in Sri Lanka to enjoy a sunset is Gold Face Hotel, a colonial hotel right on the seafront um, and the famous checkerboard that you can see in the center picture there. Colombo has really come leaps and bounds in, in its dining options. Um, most of the, there's many big hotels in, in Colombo and there's some amazing restaurants. There's a lot of standalone restaurants scattered all over the city. Um, and you know, you can just do a Google, go to TripAdvisor, and you can learn about some of those amazing places. Two of my favorite are top right hand side Park Street Muse. Um, it's uh, in Colombo 7, a residential area. And um, it's where you get out and you have bars and restaurants on either side. There's about five or six different places to eat. So it really at night, everyone's standing on the road. There's no, um, it's a privatized little road. So there's no vehicles and it really has a good vibe, especially if you want to drink and move from one music uh, genre to another. On the bottom left is the Dutch hospital outside the opposite the Hilton uh, near the, um, some of the other bigger hotels in, in, in Colombo city center. And again, each under the, the, that roof, there's about five or six different restaurants and you can go into choose anything from Sri Lankan food to the best crab curry in the world, et cetera. Fantastic. And remember when you're in Sri Lanka, you need to enjoy the fresh fruit. And here um, I have just some pictures of the pineapple, the king coconut, um, some bananas and uh, some papaya. Shopping has really, really changed in Sri Lanka. If you think back to the history of Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka is, um, on the spice route, so we have amazing spices. One such brand that I use a lot is Mars. Um, I buy all my curries in packets and then try to figure out how to cook it when I come back here. Um, of course, we have amazing tea and we have a many, many amazing tea brands. You may have heard of Dilma, Mlesna, but there's many others. Uh, gems and jewelry is, is, is amazing in Sri Lanka. Um, I bought my wedding ring in Sri Lanka. Uh, we lost it. Um, in the sea. Luckily, I was with my wife when I lost it, but the, um, the insurance company here was willing to pay me four times more than the value of the ring because um, they thought that it was worth more than I had paid. Um, and um, then, of course, from a health point of view, um, the, we have the ancient Ayurveda system, and Ayurveda is a traditional medicine using herbs and roots and you have to understand the medicinal values of turmeric, of cloves, of ginger, 
Um, and um, it's fascinating. And we have our own brand of spa also called Spa Salon. Um, clothing and home decor stores are becoming more and more popular. We've had, you know, the Odell Paradise Road, Barefoot Gallery, um, House of Fashion, uh, but and Salin is another lovely um, handlooms place, which is the picture on the right. And of course, Hamidia, where I always buy my shirts and my suits. Um, we have some amazing supermarkets like Arpico, Peels, Cargills, which have a whole range of, of these things. And some of them act as department stores. Uh, traditionally, the malls have been very few in Sri Lanka. We have Liberty Plaza, which, um, to be quite frank, is, is a little bit run down now. Majestic City also there. Um, and next to Majestic City is Unity Plaza, which is like an IT park, you know, five stories of just anything you need to with um, IT, digital, audio is amazing and amazingly cheap things. Uh, but now the face of it is changing. Um, a few uh, months ago, we had one golf face open up. Um, it's part of the Shangri-La Hotel or the Shangri-La Hotel development in Colombo. And that's the picture there that you see it's an artist's rendition but it's absolutely fantastic with a whole bunch of Sri Lankan shops and a few foreign brands also, but really the whole, it's a shopping experience, almost like you'd have in Dubai, but it's much smaller. Um, and the new one that will be opening soon is Cinnamon Life, um, which is another big development. Um, and so watch this space. So shopping is changing um, and, and you're able to buy anything you would expect in Singapore, Dubai, in Sri Lanka. So, Let's go on to the Southwest. And for this, I'm talking about Mount Avenia from Governor Barnes home, which is the Mount Avenia Hotel and is great proximity to Colombo, to Wadhava, uh, Kaluthara, Beryl, Benthata, these are all names that you probably know already. A few hotels in Indira, Koskoda, Ahungala, Ambalangoda, and then Hekadur. Um, and then the list continues um, where we have Gaul, we have Unawatuna, we have Talpe, Kokkala, Ahangama, Weligama, Mirissa, Mathara, Dikvala, Tangol, and Hambantara. So I've just rattled off all of these names. Um, I, I suggest you press pause now and, and maybe Google some of them, see where the hotels are. But these are the main hotel groups. Oh, sorry. These are the main towns where you have many hotels. And so they're the touristic towns along the, way, on the, along the southwest coast. Right, so now let's go to the themes. And for today, we're just gonna talk about wildlife parks. So here in um, Sri Lanka, as I showed this slide earlier, we have many, many um, wildlife parks, sanctuaries, reserves. Um, the main ones on the bottom right-hand side of the Southeast is Yala National Park. You have close to that Uduwalawe National Park. And then you have in the center of the country, Minaria, which is most popular during the elephant gathering in July, August. And on the northeast, so, northwest side, apologies, you have Wilpatha National Park. Now, um, let's talk about a few of those parks. Yala National Park is actually five uh, blocks, um, but mainly it's just block one that's visited. The size of Yala National Park is roughly the size of Barbados and St. Lucia put together. So it's huge. It's a mix of dense jungle and open areas around the water, around the lakes. Um, block one has the highest density of leopard in the world. So the greatest chance to see leopard in the world is there. Uh, block one has two entrances, the Pala Dupana entrance, um, which is the main entrance and where you have the large hotels um, situated and where the large hotels have their traffic going in. And then you have the Katagamu, uh, which is where you have the tented camps such as Mahura, Big Game, and the luxury villa of Taru Villas located. So a lot less uh, density of vehicles entering from that side. You can expect to see wild boar, plenty, peacock, monkey, crocodile, and hopefully elephant. Leopard and bear are um, a real treat, and you have to make sure that the customer understands that it's not everybody who gets to see it. Um, if you want to increase your chances, go for an evening safari and a morning safari. And obviously, the more times you go in, the greater the chance is. Um, and this park was established in 1938. The second one is on the northeast called Wilpatu. And this means land of lakes. There's a lot of water. Um, it's a little larger than Antica, so it's 500 square miles in size. 
Um, it was closed for around 20 years during the war. There were some mining mines there, you know, as part of the war. Um, and so um, nobody visited it for a very long time. It's opened recently in the last 10 years. It's very exciting. Um, and so what this means is that the animals are a little bit shyer, uh, but you're seeing uh, an untouched, unspoiled environment. And, and so Wilpato is an amazing one. It has the same mix of animals as Yala. And of course, it's closer to Colombo, closer to the airport. And it was established in 1938. Uduwalawe is an amazing place to see, um, uh, see the elephant. And um, the main park is a little larger than Antigua. Um, the reservoir or the main lake is the size of Anguilla or San Martin, or one third the size of San Martin or Anguilla. Um, and this park is, has a lot of tall grass. So it's a very different, it doesn't have as much uh, forest cover. Uh, so it's easier to see the elephants from a distance, uh, but you can also find a leopard there. And that was established more recently in 1972. The elephant gathering is, is a newer concept or recognizes a newer concept. Min area, not far from Pulanara, is a park where during the dry season, a lot of the elephants uh, come and congregate and it's almost like a social gathering. So it's, it is common to see a herd of 75, 100, 150 elephant together. Um, I've seen this, I've taken my kids there. It is absolutely awe-inspiring. And all you do is you just sit there with your mouth open and watch them just get on with their lives, have a little chat, drink, fight, play, um, you know, chase each other. It's fantastic. Um, a concept that I wanted to share with you is one created by my friend Gehan de Silva Vijayaratna, and that's talking about the big five. So we have the big blue, the blue whale, we have the sperm whale, uh, we have the leopard, the Asian elephant, and the sloth bear. And like people go to South Africa or to Africa to see the big five, uh, this is our big five. And there's a lot of literature which has been created around this as to how We've, these animals have been chosen and why they're there, but it's, um, it's fascinating and, and it's true. And not many countries in the world, I believe it's only Sri Lanka and South Africa, where in the same day you can see a whale and an elephant, the two largest mammals in the world. So, um, yeah, wildlife is huge in Sri Lanka. Now, one of the th reasons that the three most popular parks are Yala, Uruwalu and Wilpatu is partly due to um, the density of animals. Uh, partly due to the accommodation around it, so there's plenty of accommodation. But there are many other amazing places to visit which don't all have enough accommodation, enough good accommodation. Um, and so um, this company, Explorer by Mahura, has created a mobile camping um, experience where you can, where we will go out and set up the tents for uh, a minimum of two days is what we want you to spend out there to really experience it. But we can set it up near the, the watering hole uh, for you to see it and experience it, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and lastly, um, for the next videos, I'm going to talk about some themes. So uh, I'm going to do a video or a snippet on spine health in Sri Lanka, and I'm going to do a, a snippet on heritage, culture and festivals. I'll do a separate one on adventure, one on cuisine, one on planes, trains and helicopters and the last one on mountains. So for spending this time, thank you for listening. And I just want to end by saying, Ayubowan and Wanakam. Uh, Ayubowan, again, just to repeat, is the Sinhalese version and Wanakam is the uh, Tamil version and they are traditional greetings. Um, so thank you. I hope this was useful. Please leave a comment down at the bottom. Um, send me a, a message uh, just to let me know how I could improve the video and what videos you'd love to see um, and read about in the future. Thank you and have a great day.